Okay, so I want to do a quick video going over one more data structure. This one's going to be AVL trees. It is going to be kind of a continuation of binary search trees. I mentioned some caveats that binary search trees have in terms of balance that make them kind of inefficient depending on how you structure the data, how the data gets input. Obviously, the binary search trees have the left children being lesser values than the parent, with the right values being greater than the parent. AVLs try to address the imbalance that can happen. So if you like have a node of say 50 and you just insert 40 and 30, 20 and 10, you have nothing but left children. So you have a left heavy tree and nothing on the right side. And that's, that's fine, it, it works, but you're losing the efficiency that you're gonna get for even using a nonlinear data structure because you basically made a linear data structure with just a bunch of extra pointers. AVLs use a form of auto balancing to address this issue. So as you insert and remove data, it's going to check its height and its balance factors and all that, and it's going to correct itself. So they're pretty cool. I think they're, they're very interesting. They're kind of hard to grasp sometimes, and especially display and explain how things work. So again, this is gonna be another one of the three part videos where I have my slides, the actual code, and then also my visual. So real quick, let's just hop over to the slides. So there's my AVL trees. Again, just a continuation of my binary search tree stuff. So like I said just previously, I wanna kind of, before we even get to the slides, show what I meant. So we had a root of 50, and we inserted another one, a few more. So we had a 40, 30, 20, and a 10. And you see, all of these, kind of ignore, that's uh, one sec, this looks a little bit awkward. Now let's do this, that's a three, 20 and then 10. So these are all of my nodes, they have some data in them corresponding to that number you see on the left, but the right side to every single one of them, they're all blank, there's nothing here. But it's still there, those pointers still exist. They are taking up some form of memory. And if I want to search for 20, I've still got to traverse linearly down this left side. And that's terrible, that's actually really bad. And even if I did say insert something like 25, I've got to go left side, that's less than 40, it's less than 30, greater than 20, so now I end up with 25 over here. And this is still very, very inefficient because I've got to traverse through 50, 40, 30, something down here. Whereas opposed if I had something, say, along the lines of 30, going to, well, let me just do this. 30, going to a 20, going to a 10, this goes to a 40, this goes to 50. And look, now this is a much, much better looking tree. I uh, don't need to go down one, two, three, four traversals to get to the end. I can get to anything in at least two traversals. If I need to insert that 25, it's less than 30, greater than 20, and immediately I can place it. I say immediately, almost immediately. But this balance makes a tree so much more efficient just by design. So. This is what AVLs attempt to improve over traditional binary search trees. Now, yes, there is going to be a little bit more expense on computation because you're gonna have to actually keep track of height of nodes. So there's a little bit more space involved. And then also you have to actually account for the balance factor every time that you insert and remove data. So the insertion removal process is a little bit more taxing in terms of how much computation is done. But the end result that we do for data structures is the way to parse and traverse through our data. And this makes that so much better. So that's why these exist. I just kind of want to touch on that real quick. We'll get into how they work, but just want to do a display here and now. It's ABL. Just another type of tree. It is an improved binary search tree, as I've already said. Here, ABL is a nonlinear abstract data structure, just like our binary search trees. They're named after their inventors, Allison Velsky and Landis. I'm so sorry if I butchered that. I actually tried to find the pronunciations and could not find them, but I digress. Every tree is 
exists to solve a very strong caveat that standard binary search trees have. I misspelled trees, I'm so sorry. There's an E there, I promise. And it's to balance. So they self balance themselves, and this improves their efficiency and the ability to navigate through them. Now, how do they work? So, as I said, it is an improved binary search tree. So that pattern of left child less than parent, right child greater than parent, still exists. That has to maintain, or AVLs just do not work because at their core, they are binary search trees. So they have that, but now we include nodes all have height and there is a balance factor to each node. So node balance is determined by the difference of a node's left child and right child's height. So I say height here. This would be a balance factor. It's going to be the height of the node, the node's left child, minus the height of the node's right child, and we'll get into how that works later. For now, let's take a look at the nodes. So near identical to our binary search tree nodes. You can tell we have the actual nodes themselves, the index value that they have. We have a 15, 10, and 20 here. They all have pointers to a left and a right child but now they also have height values. So we have this one here and these two zeros here. So 10 and 20 have a height of zero. They are leaves of the tree. They are the bottom nodes. 15, in this case, is the root, so it has a height of one. Now, when it comes to null pointers, because this is gonna to come to a factor earlier, actually, let's just do a quick small tree here. So this, 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 um, this, this, and I think that's good. Okay, actually, let's do this. So if we look at it, if we just think about this, this leaf down here should have a height of zero, right? And then if we have that, this means this should have a height of one, this should have a height of 2, and this right here is going to have a height of 1. And you might think that's it, but whenever we look at all this, we have to have height of our left and right children. So if we try and get the balance factor of this node, we need to look at its children. Well, they're blanks. So anytime you have a leaf, which is these last nodes, you can treat their children as having heights of negative one, even though they technically don't exist. You'll see that expressed in code later. I just wanna go ahead and touch on that right now. If you try to get the height of something that doesn't exist, it's going to return that as negative one. And it kind of makes sense for some, like this is gonna be a negative one here. Not a big deal. But for now, enough of that. Let's go on and look at our node class. So almost identical to our binary search tree node class, there is a single difference, and it's this integer height. So every single node is going to have a height associated with it. We will be setting that height as we insert data. Now, degree function, this is exactly the same as a binary search tree. I'm gonna have a link to the binary search tree video uh, in the description. So if you want to look back at how these work, you can click that and it'll go through all the various things. A lot of this is going to have repeat slides from the binary search tree just for completion. I'm not going to cover them in this video to a large degree just because I've already done that. But just like the other one, enter of child count zero, check for the left child if there's one there, increase the count. If there's a right child, increase that count. Not a big deal. ABL class. So again, very, very similar. In fact, if we take a look at it, all of these functions exist. The root exists. Our constructor and our deconstructor haven't changed. And none of our public functions have changed. The only difference from our binary search tree and our ABL in terms of how many functions we have are these ABL specific functions right here. That is get height, get balance factor, right rotate, left rotate, and balance tree. These are all necessary for the self-balancing aspect of the ABL. And we'll get into those after we do the insertion and the deletion because those are gonna have some ABL specific parts to them. So 
Why don't they? Since ABLs are BSTs, they'll add new data in the exact same way. And have our left child, less than parent, less than right child pattern, and no difference there. However, once we've actually inserted the data, we need to make sure that we have kept track of its height in the tree, because that is going to be very important when it comes to balancing the tree. And once we have actually inserted the data, set its height and everything, we need to check if our tree is balanced or not. So we're going to do a check to see if it's balanced, and then if it's not, then we're going to have to balance it as we insert data. So as we insert the data, there's a chance that that tree structure will change entirely, and same thing for whenever we remove. But for now, this, just our public insert function, starts at the root, no big deal. And then here, almost all of this is exactly the same. So check if it's null, if it is, and we just add the new data, and here we're going to traverse down the left side, this traverse down the right side, but down here we have two lines. And that's the node's height is equal to standard max get height nodes left child and then get height node right child plus one. So we're going to get the maximum values, whichever one's larger, the height of the left child or the height of the right child plus one is what the node's height is going to be. So if it's a leaf, then its children are both going to be negative one and negative one and its height is going to be zero. Okay, and then for our last thing, we are going to check the balance on node. If I check it, it's just going to execute it. It will do all the checks of needing a balance in the function balance tree. We'll get to that in a bit. So, how do we remove data? Well, exact same way we did in the binary search tree. You're gonna have the same three different degrees of deletion, zero, one, and two. You're going to make sure that it's a not empty tree, all that good stuff. But we're going to do almost the same thing we did just a moment ago where we had to set the height and we had to check the balance. Except for instead of checking the node that we're actually dealing with, we're going to check the root. So here, exact same thing. If it's an empty tree, just return. Otherwise, let's go ahead and start removing. So, all this should be very very familiar we have our actual start part it's going to be basically all of this and we have the actual deletions and you'll notice in the deletion part this is the new stuff so for here the start exactly the same thing we have for binary search tree so i'm not really going to touch on that too much but here on the deletion we set our degree we do one of our deletions in this else statement we have to know that we're removing data. And that's what this else statement is. It's going to be guaranteed to do a deletion. Once we deleted something, we're going to set our roots height based on the height of its children. Because since we remove something, the heights are going to get adjusted. So we're going to readjust heights on the root to make sure things are okay. Once that's done, we're gonna call balance tree to make sure the tree is still balanced. If it's not, then it's going to rebalance itself. So again, this is going to be a zero degree deletion. Just delete the nodes, so it's a null pointer, no big deal. One degree deletion is going to be swapping data and then deleting the last data. And two degree deletion is going to be, uh, yeah, I think this is, uh, I did successor based deletion and then a recursive call to the node that actually deleted. So again, if you want more explanation on the degrees of deletion, as being the binary search tree video, not a big deal. But how does an ABL stay balanced? So ABLs have a genuine advantage over BSTs because they can auto balance themselves and keep themselves in a pretty efficient manner. Now, it's not perfect, but it is significantly better than the potential to have a left or right heavy tree. ABLs prevent that by having some very low balance factor for these, we have them as a balance factor of two, so things don't get too out of order. So, we have a few helpful functions we're gonna go over, and then we use those to get the node's height, get the tree's balance factor, well, the node's balance factors for the tree, and then we're gonna rotate, if we need to, 
in order to actually balance it. So, getting the height. So we set our node's height previously when we insert them into the tree. Because we get the maximum value of the left child and the right child, we add one to it and that's going to be that node's height. However, like I said previously, if the node is null, the height is doing negative one when we call get height. Otherwise, we just return the node's height, and we should be good. So real quick, let's take a look at this. And we're gonna get the heights of these nodes here. So if I get the height of this node, it's gonna be negative one, because both of his children are negative one, so we're gonna max negative one, negative one, plus one. So the maximum value of two negative ones is one, so this is gonna have a height of zero. And same thing over here, because it's the exact same thing. And I made a mistake earlier, and I said that this height was one. This height's zero. I just I made a mistake earlier in the, in the uh, video, and I apologize for that. But its height is going to be not from its depth of the tree, but its height from the leaves. Now, this one, even though it's on the same tier here, is going to have a different height. It's going height from bottom up, it's basically. And, well, in a way, it's what's happening. But the height's going to be different. It's the number of, it's the distance it takes this node to get to the bottom the longest distance of that. That's what this max here is for. And you'll see that when we get to the root. But, just for now, I'll stop rambling. This node, its children's heights are zero and zero. We determined that earlier because both of them have no children. So it's max of negative one, negative one plus one. So they have zero. So let's do max of zero and zero, which is magically gonna be zero plus one gives me a height of one on this node. Now, the root finally has something changed a little bit. Its left child has a height of one, its right child has a height of zero. So the maximum value is going to be one plus one gives me a height of two for the root. And it takes me two traversals to get to the leaves. The leaves take zero traversals to get to themselves. This takes one traversal to get to the leaves. And I guess if you actually look at it, the the bottom ones take a negative one traversal in the opposite direction to get to the leaves. So if you're ever confused on the height of a node and tree, just count the number of traversals it takes that to get to a leaf. And it should be pretty consistent. But I digress. This is how we get height. The reason we use this function is because we are setting the height in the insertion but we're never accounting for negative one because we can't set the value for something that doesn't exist. So if we call get height on a null pointer, we're actually saying, hey, get me the height of node's right child and we want to check this node's right child, it's going to segfault, it's going to throw an error. So we use this function to say, hey, if the node you're looking for doesn't exist, just return negative one and that kind of levels things out and it also makes some mathematical consistencies. I get balance factor. This is the main reason of why, well, one of the main reasons why I get height exists. Because we really, really care about getting the left and right child of our node. So, this function is gonna calculate the node's balance factor and returns it. So null pointers are always gonna to default to zero because their balance factor is gonna be zero. We don't only really care about them. The zero is not actually the real balance factor. It's more so we just don't want to error out. However, we want a balance factor. Let's just do this. Let's get the balance factor of this root. So get height of node left. We know that these are leaves, so they have heights of zero. So we end up with zero minus zero. Balance factor here is going to be zero. Not a big deal. Well, this is the height. But the balance factor of the root is going to be zero. So it's not out of balance, that's good. And then let's say we want to get the balance factor of our leaves. So if you look at this left side, it's going to have two children heights of negative one, negative one. So we have negative one minus negative one, which should give me a, a 
zero. And I'm pretty sure that this right one is also going to have a zero as well. But we have a balanced tree. There's no question that this is a balanced tree. It's just three simple nodes and kind of this upside down V pattern. What happens if we do something like this? Obviously we have more nodes on the left side, but is it enough nodes to consider it unbalanced? Well, let's do a check. So if we consider the, the leaves, we're going to have a balance factor of zero. And we should have zero here, a zero here, but now this one. This is going to be the first thing that doesn't have a zero for a balance vector because it's going to have a height of negative one and its right tile is going to be zero. So we end up with negative one minus zero, which gives this particular node here a balance factor of negative one. Okay. That's cool and all. But what about the, what the root? What does it have? Well, if we look at it, the height of its left child is one height of its right child is zero so we get the height of the left child one minus the height of the right child zero and that's going to be a one so the root has a balance factor of one its left child has a balance factor of negative one and both of our leaves have balance factors of zero so the range that we look for is anything uh, let me see if I wrote this correctly. Anything in this in this category here is going to be balanced. So if you get negative one, zero, or one for your balance factors, the tree in that category is balanced and there's no need to do rotations, there's no need to rebalance it, you're perfectly fine. It's whenever you get negative two and two or anything beyond that, that things are gonna start going awry and you have to start doing some actual rotations. So one example we can do is to add another child here. So again, we have balance factor of zero because it has children of negative one, negative one. Not a big deal. This is going to be the same thing. And this means that this is going to have zero minus negative one. So this has a balance factor of one. And then this right here will have negative one minus one. So mean it is going to have a balance factor of two. And immediately we're going to see the first node that would need to be rotated. So we'll get to rotations in just a second, but I want to show this would be an example of an unbalanced tree. And then if we look at it, then the root would also have a balance factor of two. So we have zero, one, two, two, and zero. So something's gotta give, something's gotta change here. But for now, let's take a quick look at how we balance our actual trees and then get to the actual rotation aspects that do balance them. So. This function right here, this balance tree function, is going to be the actual magic that makes this all work. So, first, we want to get the actual balance factor. It's very, very important. So, we already called the function get balance factor. We know how to do all that. Not a big deal. Now, like I said, if the balance factor, and this is going to be absolute value, balance factor is greater than one, then the tree is unbalanced. Basically, it means if it is greater than one or it is less than negative one. Now, that is separated out into two different functions because what they have is going to be completely different in terms of like what gets rotated and how it gets rotated. Now, if it's greater than one, we will need to immediately do a check and say, hey, get the balance factor of the node's left child and see if that's less than zero. If so, you'll need to do a left rotation and then you'll need to do a right rotation. Conversely, if your balance factor is less than one, you'll want to check the node's right child to make sure that that is not greater than zero. Or when it is greater than zero, then you're gonna need a right rotation and then a left rotation. So either you're gonna do a single rotation or you're gonna do a two-step rotation. And there's a lot of, there's just several factors here working on. 
but let's take a look at left rotations. Pretty simple. Honestly, they're both almost exactly the same. Just the only difference is the left rotation heavily uses the right child for things, and then the right rotation uses left child, but you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. Let's take a real quick look at the code real quick. So we pass in a node that we want to actually rotate and then we want to set up two nodes. One named right, one named hold. And then we want to adjust the pointers of right and node. So we're not actually creating anything technically new here. We're not inserting any data, we're not removing any data. We are just going to repoint our data. Now when we do that, we will need to adjust the height because their positions in the tree will have changed. And then finally we'll need to reset what our actual node is in the tree. Because essentially where we're doing our rotation, you can kind of imagine it almost completely separate from our main tree. So if I did something like this, I had this whole tree off to the side doing its own thing, and then I wanted to rotate here, I know that this is a balanced tree, but like, just imagine that, oh, what the heck is that? That was weird. Imagine this section is why I want to rotate. When I get done rotating it, this entire subtree over here on the left side will be completely unaffected. So I know we did a tree earlier, but that's a little bit more of a complicated um, rotation. So what I want to do is a very, very simple one that is going to do a single right rotation. Well, no, it's going to be a single left rotation. Let's do the left rotation first. So, do this. Uh, right here, right here, right here. Let's make this a 70. Let's make this a oh, 70, 75, 80. Okay, so I pass a node and I want to rotate on 70. At 70, we're going to create a right node for nodes right subchild. That's going to be 75. And we hold right here on 80. No, 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 no. Not 80. No, it is the right child, 75's, left child. So it's null. And I'll explain why we care about null right now. So, what we're doing is we're going to repoint the right child so his left pointer is now going to point to node. So what was pointing at null right here is going to wrap around over here and point to 70. And the node's right pointer, which is this, pointing to 75, is going to point to what hold is, which is just a null pointer. So it's not going to point to anything. So look right here, hold is a null pointer. So now 70 has no child. 75 has a left child of 70, so if we restructure this a little bit, you end up with something like this. 75 being the parent now, 70 being the left child, 80 being the right child. We get our balance factors, we end up with negative one minus negative one, it's gonna be zero, negative one minus negative one is zero, and then zero minus zero is gonna be zero. Height of one, heights of zeros, everything seems good, it's all good. Now we do need to say node is equal to right, which if you recall is 75, so now the actual node that was being pointed to from wherever in the tree is now appropriately pointing to the right place. So now it exists inside the tree, this part of it's balanced, and everything's good. So that's how we do a single left rotation. If we do a single right rotation, it's kind of just the exact opposite. We're going to do the same thing, set up nodes, except for a little bit different. We're using nodes left child, and then the left child's right child. And then we're going to do a little bit, almost the exact same rotation, but obviously left and right are going to be reversed, adjust the heights, and then adjust the actual node. So in this case, let's imagine we do the opposite. We have 80, 75, 70, node equals 80, left equals 75, whoops, and then hold equals 70. So 
let's take a look. Left's right pointer needs to point to node, just like previously. And then node's left pointer needs to point to hold, which is a null pointer, so it just kind of goes away. So now we end up with a 75, 70, 80. So there's our right rotation. These are single right rotations. These are pretty simplistic. There's not a whole lot going on. But if you recall on that previous slide, we are going to encounter two more complex versions. I'll see if I can get to those, because if you look at it, if balance is greater than one, we have another if statement here. Get balance factor, node left is less than zero, we'll need to do a left rotate first. Same thing here, if balance is less than or equal to one, then we need to do a right rotation if the node right is balance factor greater than zero. So essentially, what if we had, let's see, left child first, let's do the right, let's do this, let's get something that's set up like this. We do a right rotation first and then a left rotation. And let's kind of use some of that same similar data. So we're doing a right rotation first, right? Correct. So let's do a tree that's set up like this. 70 pointing to 80 this time, and then the left child pointing to 75. So same data, <clears throat> but let's take a look at our actual balance factors right now. So we have a negative one and negative one here because the heights of null pointers are negative one. So we do negative one minus negative one. These are 75 is gonna have a balance factor here of zero. 75 has a height of zero, that's negative one. So now we have zero minus negative one, that's gonna be one. And then we have negative one minus one, which gives 70 a balance factor of negative two. So we have negative two, one, and zero. Now, at this point, we have reached this, so balance of our actual node is going to be less than negative one. We do this if statement. Now, we check this one. If get balance factor of the right child is greater than one, then we need to do a right rotation on our right child. And we saw that our get balance factor for node right gives us one. So now we have to do right rotation first. And when we're done with that, we need to do a rotation on the left, the actual node, left rotation on the node. So first things first, we need to do very quick right rotation on 80. So we are going to essentially have node equals 80. Then we'll have left equals 75. And then we'll have hold equals null. So left child's right pointer is going to point to node. So 75 is now pointing to 80. And then node's left child will point to hold, which essentially is going to point to nothing. Right? Yes. 75 points to 80, 80 points to nothing. And then we say node equals left, which basically sets 75 here, since node now equals left. And now left points to our node, original node, which was 80. So we have this 70, 75, 80 aspect. And if you recall, this should look fairly familiar. We just did a left rotation on something like this earlier because this is still unbalanced. And so we have that two-step uh, balance factor here. So now we do a left rotation on 70. So take a quick look. So nodes can be there, rights here. Then we have our 70 here. Right, it's gonna be 75. And then we will have hold as the 
Actually, you know what? Just keep things consistent. Let me do 70, 75, 80. 70, 75, 80. Okay. Oops. 70, 75, 80. Wow, that's a massive circle. It doesn't matter. So, node 70. Right child 75. Hold 80. So, we made these constraints. Good to go. So, the right child's left pointer needs to point to node. So, that points to 70, and then the node's right child points to hold, giving me this in the end. So now we have 75, 70, and 80. So this is what we had before. Okay, this 70, actually, let me get this slide over here. So this 75, 70, 80. So we started with 70, 80, 75, which is very unbalanced. We had negative 2, 1, 0. And then we did a, oops, sorry, 70, uh, 75, and then 80 right here. And this is still unbalanced because we had a 0, and then we had a say, negative 1, and then that would be 0 minus negative negative one minus negative one, which would be negative two. So still, this is unbalanced, but if we check it, we have a negative two and then a negative one, which means that it's unbalanced here. We have negative two, but then we have negative one, so we don't do the second one, so we just do a left rotation now. And then when we did that, we ended up with a 75, 70, 80, which has balance factors of zero, zero, and zero. So that was a two-step process on rotation. That is the hard part. <laughs> that right there is 100% the actual hard part is understanding how these rotations work and visualizing what's actually going on. So I really, really do hope that me actually showing kind of the code line by line what's actually going on with the data did help. I, I really do hope that helped because that is not easy to portray at all. Hopefully it isn't just completely useless to, to everybody, but if it helps at least one person, that was worth it. So, how do we search data? Basically, this is the exact same thing as binary search tree. As a matter of fact, it is the exact same thing as a binary search tree, because it is a binary search tree. But, since we can guarantee that the data is going to be balanced at all times, it improves the efficiency significantly, because you're not going to end up with something like this. You're not going to go through every single iteration here. This is completely useless in most ways. Like, it still takes so long just to get here. Whereas opposed to something that, like, isn't exactly pretty, this is still at most three iterations as opposed to this one's one, two, three, and then you can see it keeps going down to the left as opposed to balancing itself out trying to minimize the amount of traversals you need to do because we have the left child is less than the parent right child is greater than the parent that keeps us in line knowing which direction to go when we're traversing so we have a straight path to go it's just making that path shorter is very very critical in improving the efficiency of these data structures and this is going to be the exact same code so I'm really not going to touch on it too much again like I said if the if you're looking for a value check it against the actual node if it's less than go down the left side if it's greater then go down the right side eventually you'll find it if you didn't find it it's not on the tree not a big deal and then for the actual traversals this is going to be the exact same thing for the pre-order, in-order, post-order traversals. But, one thing to note. <clears throat> when you do pre-order, post-order, well, specifically pre-order, in a binary search tree, the root never changes unless you delete everything up to the root and then start adding data in again. That will never change. When you're doing ADLs, 
the order of the data could change drastically based on how things are being um, rotated, balanced, so on and so forth. So do keep that in mind. And again, here we have the post order, which is going to deal with the data after it's traversed down the left and the right side. Then we have in order, which deals with the data after it's traversed down the left side, and then it traverses down the right side, so it's in between. And then for pre-order, we deal with the data first, and then traverse down the left and right side. So hopefully everything here makes sense. I, I really hope this explains the advantages that ABLs have over binary search trees. Even if it doesn't all make sense at first, it should at least illustrate that there are some genuine key benefits out of using ABLs. Now yes, the insert and the removal process does take more computation. There is a lot more complexity happening here. And it takes a bit more memory because you're actually keeping track of the height itself on every single node. But I think that those restrictions there are so minimal that the end benefit of minimizing the non-traversals and keeping that balance of the tree, I think the trade-offs there are absolutely fantastic. I don't think it's even a question. So hopefully you learned something. And I think that's it for me here. I'm going to do a code review. And then I'll also do an actual illustration to kind of show more of the actual balancing factors, the actual traversals and stuff like that, how they actually kind of, how the ABLs themselves actually kind of grow and morph over time. So hopefully this video is helpful. You learned something. I'll see you guys in the next one.